feel like I'm being set up here. This pin <laughs> is brutal. There it is. Go in. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> With your fade, would you rather aim it at trouble, at OB lines, at water and move it away from it, or would you rather move towards a hazard with the fade? 100% away from the trouble. Um, I've kind of geared my, my game, especially later in high school and college where my command of the ball didn't feel like it was very good. So me and my coach were like, all right, how about we just eliminate the left side of the golf course completely? So that's kind of what I based my game off of. And I've kind of thrived in college, you know, if there's trouble left, I am right in the middle of the trouble and peel it off of it. And I'm never scared of hitting it left. All right, let's see that. Yeah. So like, this is a great example. I water left, but I feel like, well, this tree is actually really helpful too, but water left, a tree here. I feel like I aim it right at the flag, right at the water and never going to hit in the water. Never hit it in the water. I, I could I, hit it way right, but <laughs> never going left. Well, you, I, I wanted to talk to you about this because you, you mentioned it, it flying a little tighter these days. Yeah. And I, wanted, I wanted to hear about your process getting there, but let's see that tight one. You did bail right. Uh, bail, that is, you know, for me, I wouldn't even call that a bail. It's like just off, 10 yards off. But yeah, that tighter, the tighter start line has been huge for me. Is it something you've kind of taken in from being out on tour for a long time and seeing other players' ball flights as well? Yes. Yeah. There was a reason why everybody else isn't hitting 30 yard cuts right, off exactly. The oh, gosh. There's nowhere that doesn't play. That was, that's been the one that's really been helpful. So what is your like, you know, ball profile, what, what do you want to see coming out of driver and how does the ball kind of fit into that? Yeah, so I think I, I base it off of what my, if I'm not having a great day, what is going to be my fairway finder and what I default to. And it's kind of a low squeeze fade. Um, so I'm hitting down on it, um, swinging left on it. And I, want, I like to see it come out pretty low um, especially for that one. So and that's Pro V1. You Pro V1. Lower Pro launch V1. than the Pro V1 action. Yeah, yeah, lower launch and then lower spin too. Because when I hit down on it with a, um, a spinny, like a Pro V1X, it just spins a ton. And even with the Pro V1, it's still spinning like a nice amount, you know, 27, 28 when I'm hitting that squeeze one. So I'd say it's like a mid height to lower fade. Um, that's probably cutting 10, 15 yards. Yep. All right, let's do that and then we'll go hit something the fair way. Yeah, it's a decidedly different ball flight yeah. than we were. Uh, yeah. Than we were those ones we were apexing. Man, that's exciting that you got this yeah. figured out. All right, let's go to the fairway. I don't know if I. I don't even want to say I have it figured out. <laughs> it's just been trending in the right that, direction. I, I like that. I like that a lot. So, we're here in the fairway, 274 flag. Um, yeah. <coughs> we got some elements here. There's water left. There's bunkers right. A lot of elements. A lot of elements. Water long. W water long. W what's? Tell me about your like risk calculation here. If we're in a tournament, what do you? Uh, what, what are you calculating here? And, and what? Yeah. How does that work into what kind of shot you want to hit? For me, like no matter how good you are from 225 to 275, it's a really hard shot to hit right where you're looking. So, um, I'm just like my short game has always been a strength of mine. So I'm gonna try and leave it in the spot that is the easiest way to make four. If it happens to sneak onto the green and have a look, then great. So. First thing I think about is to not hit it in the water. All right, um, good. We, we do, we, we're aligned yeah. in that. That's the first thing I'd be thinking about it's as well. It's a very important <laughs> thing to lay out. But I think just assessing the hole and seeing the green as we're coming up, that, that right bunker, because it's short of pin highs, is, is a pretty good spot to get up and down from. Um, anything right of that looks bad because down slope, Bermuda Ralph chipping towards water, it's no good. Um, and another thing is like, if you, if you get a hot draw going in there, I think it could pitch on the green and actually roll through the left side into the water. Um, so I'm trying to hit a little bit of a higher draw. If I had to describe it as well, what you're describing sounds like you're trying to hit a pretty boring golf shot here. You are yes. not 
trying to be a hero with no, this. No, that flag does not exist. Right, that's interesting. The flag does not exist, yes. So we know if you stuff this to two feet, it'll be an accident. Total, so you, oh, total accident. We'll have to reshoot that whole part if that's the case to make it act like it was intentional. I don't think I've had a two-foot eagle on tour. Someone can fact check me on that. That's but. probably pretty rare out there. So interesting to watch these shots, yeah. knowing it's what you're of, trying to do versus like I otherwise. Just lace that shot. Yeah, right I'd there. be like, ah, oh, yeah. little right, little right. Like yeah. no, that's literally where you told me you wanted to aim. Yeah, and I didn't even think about the winds off the left. Yeah, so it's like <laughs> shots even harder. But if you wanted to, let, let's see, like go for the hero shot. If you okay. try to hit a hero shot yeah. here, one would it be the same club, and two, what's 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 different here? It would you, be the so same. You're down to down to need eagle. Need eagle here. Need eagle, and I'm like three ahead of second. Correct. <laughs> okay. Perfect. That's, a, that's um, an important caveat here with the purse size this week. So interesting thing about how I swing is even off the tee in my longer clubs, when I hit a, a tight fade, that's actually my longest carry shot. Hmm. Um, just my mechanism for hitting a draw. It's a little bit spinnier. Um, sometimes I actually have a hard time hitting a, a lower draw and it's, it's a little bit higher, but doesn't carry as far funny enough. So I'm going to be trying to hit a a fade that starts in the middle of this lake, try and get it to come down like, in my mind, 10 feet left of the pin, which is gonna be really hard to do with the wind off the left, and just kind of hope Let's for the best. It. That's exciting, just hearing that out loud. Mm. It's gotta be good, right? Oh yeah, that's gonna be right side of the green. Ooh, got oh, nice got the kick. bounce. Oh, that's about, I, from my eyesight, 30 feet for eagle, yeah. maybe? So tell me about, like, your relationship with descent angle and, and coming into PGA Tour greens, what, how the golf ball kind of fits into that and how technical you get on stuff like that. Luckily, I've always hit it high, so I've never had a problem with high launch, um, launching it high, so that's another reason I trust the Pro V1. Um, and I feel like it's a good kind of medium for spin as well because it's low spin off the tee, which I love, keeps my drives a little bit straighter. Um, but I still feel like I have all the workability with it around the greens and with my irons. Um, and I think a, a, a big part of it is you want to feel like you've hit a nice shot that seems like it would stop in the area, would stop and, and have that happen multiple times over and over again. And I've had that happen with the Pro V, so I've stuck with it and trusted it. And it's super consistent when I get on the machine and and see the spin rates and launch angles on it, it's it's kind of right where I wanted it to be. So um, I, I honestly, now that I now that I did think about that, I don't think about it anymore. Yeah, now. I just kind of see the shot and trust that it's going to do what it's going to do. Speaking of seeing the shot, you're talking about workability. Let's say let's say there's a tree somewhere kind of uh, to our left that's preventing you from hitting your fade. If you had to swoop yeah. a draw in there, let's see that. Oh yeah. What changes and how do you do that? For me, a lot of it's just a setup based and then when I sit here I like to envision the shot first I think that's a common thing that a lot of guys do is you know I, I see a, a spot out there that I want to start the ball I'll pick a intermediate spot right in front of the ball that I that when I'm over I can I can look at that and then look at that and then straight up picture the shot and for a little draw I'll just kick it back in my stance here and close it a little bit just, just swing the club the same it's all set up swing the club the same Interesting. yep That is flag hunting. Ooh, this could also be very good. Oh, maybe. It go in? <laughs> I think it's, I mean, it's on the green, but didn't get all the way back to that back okay. pin. But. Okay, Take it. Are you drawer the ball now? That was sick. No, I, I don't know what's happening. I'm just, <laughs> I'm actually, it's kind of lacing it right now. Lacing it straight. All right, let's go to your wedge club. Okay. So 105 yards, I feel like there's there's kind of two ways you can get to this, right? Mm -hmm. you, know your you know your feels really well, you know how to hit a ball 105 yards, and there's also, all right, what does a launch angle look like? What does a spin rate look like? Do you kind of take us to both sides of this, right? Like what, what, what would you expect in terms of how much are you trying to get this ball to spin? Why, how are you gonna hit a ball 105 yards? And how does yeah. it relate to the club you've chosen? When I have 
um, you know, anywhere between 100 and 110 yards, I can hit my 58 degree, any of those distances. It's just whether I want to hit it that hard. Um, and most of the time when you hit it harder with a, with a wedge, it's gonna spin more. So in this case, downwind, pretty firm greens, firmish greens, I think spin rate should not, like worrying about spinning back is not gonna be an issue, even with a back flag. Um, so that's kind of the first thing I'm thinking about. Second thing is trage. Um, again, just because it's downwind, um, little firmer greens, I'm not too worried about hitting one that's just kind of too high or anything. So I'm gonna go like a mid height to a little bit higher. Um, a lot of the times I do like to flight my wedges just because my variance and my carry, um, I've learned the last couple of years that the lower I flight it, that variance gets lower. Right at it. Ooh. Oh. Whoa. All right, what did we learn there? Um, I think that almost, <laughs> it I almost went it, in. I landed it right where I wanted. I wanted to land it 105 yards, and I put about 100 swing on it just because of the downwind. I, I thought the first bounce was going to skip, but it plugged and just spun about 25 Well, feet. you're talking about firm greens. I was like, yeah, this guy has not been here yeah, all winter. This I, is, uh, so this is Bermuda. So, in this situation, it's like going back out after a rain delay, yeah. which we've, we've seen some of those on tour so far this year. Of, oh, yeah. It, it, it is part of the game is figuring out like how to get a ball to not rip all the way back. Yes. So you had you tried 58, it's ripping too much. Now you got yep. 50. 50. How far do you normally carry a 50? I normally carry a 50 130 yards. And you're going to try to hit it 100 to go 105? Exactly, 100 to go 105. So that's a lot off of a 50 then. A lot so. off of a 50 and... The, my reasoning here is now that I know there's a slope just right of it and a ridge like that, um, in order to get something close, I'm going to have to work something up against. Mm. And my next club would be a 54 degree. And I still think if I'm trying to hit it up against controlling the spin as I like to control it, um, I still think the 54 is going to spin too much hitting it up against. Okay. So this is why I'm, I'm going to hit 50 and just trying to hit like a little dead hand, little peeler back in there. That was low. All right, that's the best of your bunch so far. Yeah. Still kicked way left, but yeah. you I'm got sorry. it to skid kind of from the middle of that green. I feel like I'm back. being set up here. What's that? I'm just kidding. I, was <laughs> like, I feel like I'm being set up here. This <laughs> pin is brutal. All right, that Sit. should. Watch, that one won't kick left. That's got to be shot. like a foot too far right, huh? Come on, spin left. Oh, all right, there's okay. the golf shot. Okay. That's interesting. So you think the 54 would have even spun too much in that situation? Yeah, and it's, it's I guess it's not fully the spin, it's it's the contact too. Um, there's just a particular way I like to feel hitting like that no spin kind of chippy cutter. And I feel like I have to give the 54 too much spin or too much speed. So my contact isn't as tight as it would be with a 50 degree. Because with the 54, I'm like, okay, I have to hit it still like 85, 90% hard. And I feel like trying to hit that specific of a shot, it's a little bit harder for me to kind of hit it where I want it. Is there anyone that comes to mind right here, 105 yards out, anyone on tour that you would swap places with versus yourself? Yes, there's one guy that I've played with early on in my career that I would kill to hit wedges like, and it's Justin Thomas. Hmm. He, he might have my favorite game on tour because um, he's just so creative and he's never just he's never just sitting up and being like, I'm going to hit a stock, you know, whatever. He's always has a picture in mind, um, super creative player, but his wedges are incredible to me. I mean, he picks his wedges, he hits draws, he hits cuts. He's not afraid to hit pitching wedge from 100 yards, but he's also not afraid to hit lob wedge from 125 yards if the shot calls for it. So I don't know what his stats are per se, wedge game, but I just feel like, I see him hit so many wedges to just this. Okay, I gotta hit one close. Now. All right, come on. This is a tough shot. So really the line is between Chris and the flag. Yes, with that ball flight. Mm. There it is. Go in. <laughs> there it is, okay. 
That a is a, kind of a sneaky hard shot. It is. All right. I'm just going to end on that. All right. So if we were taking that conservative approach with that second shot, let's say it left us right here in this front right part of this green, back pin. Yep. What kind of shot would you hit here? We'll hit the shot you would hit first, and then we can mess around with some of your options of what you could have done. So I think the shot I would hit, knowing how much slope is by that pin, is a higher shot with more spin. Okay. Just to take off the variables of this first part, there's like a little grain change here that um, you'd want to avoid and fly over that. So I think it's like a mid to high sh spinning shot and try and one hop, not stop, but one hop, and just trickle out after yep. the second hop. Um, and just try and get it three, four feet left of the hole. But take this first part of the green out of play and probably fly it just past that divot is my yep. is my thought. Yep. All right, let's see it. Landed it just past the divot. And they really set you up with a hard shot here. <laughs> Look at that ball. <laughs> <laughs> If you're trying to hit the biggest flop versus hitting one with the most spin, what are the two differences in those two shots? Yeah, um, I think a, a sneaky part of that is is how fast you swing and the weight. Um, for me, I actually use weight as a pretty big determining factor. If I'm really trying to spin it, my weight's like like 90-10 almost. Like all my weight foot. is Got all on my left foot. Got it. And when I'm trying to hit a flop, it's not quite as much. It's probably like 70-30, and my swing is a lot smoother. There's not a forced acceleration or anything, but when I'm trying to really hit a high spinner, there's a lot of acceleration through the ball. Interesting. Well, we're struggling with this ridge a little bit. If, yeah. we're, if we're trying to eliminate that ridge, yes. I want to see how this would look. Mm. Go in. <laughs> oh. Thing. I think that might have been the shot. I guess so. <laughs> you're, you're, you're introducing a, nice a lot of elements slide, but otherwise, but no, yeah, man, this was awesome. I really, I, there may be one that made me want to play golf, and two, I, I really did learn a lot uh, just in how you think about and approach things. So appreciate your time on that. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Of course, so. This is cool. a lot of fun. That was great.